Um, okay. The recording is on. Abhinas, could you pray, please, and we will start. Yes, Sir, sir, thank you. Okay, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, beautiful time, Father God, in your presence, Lord Jesus. We are here, Lord Jesus, with one accord and one mind, Lord Jesus, to praise you, to worship you, to learn your word, Father God. As we are here, Lord Jesus, we're submitting ourselves, our everything to you, Jesus. As we are going to learn about our, our human spirit, Father God, help us to relate the things, Father God, which is written in the Bible, Father God, so that we can learn more and more about you, Father God. We praise you, Master. We submit this day, and we submit the pastor asses to your mighty hand, Jesus. As he is speaking, Father God, help him speak in a deeper way, Father God, in a truthful way, Father God, in a new revelation way, Jesus. We praise you, Master. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give thanks to you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to BC 214, Developing the Human Spirit. Uh, last week, we missed our class. I didn't do the class. Um, so let's move forward. Today, uh, uh, we're going to get into the next chapter, chapter five. Um, I haven't really finished the notes, so I'm just going to talk first and then um, complete uh, typing off the notes, and I'll share it with you subsequently. But in this uh, fifth chapter, what I want to do or share with us is um, start talking to us uh, about um, how the human spirit interacts with the spiritual realm. So that's what we will talk about in chapter five. And then in chapter six, which is the next chapter, um, we want to talk about, let me see what I put down. The, um, we want to talk about the uh, faculties of the human spirit. Uh, we want to cover that. And then subsequently, we want to cover the functions of the human spirit. And um, yeah, so those would be the two main topics. And then we'll close off the course uh, talking a little bit about imparting and re reproducing spirit to spirit. So those are the three main sections we want to cover. Right? Um, just to repeat, uh, we're going to talk right now today about the human spirit and its interactions with the spiritual realm to get some understanding on it. Then after we do that, we're going to go into talking about the uh, faculties of the human spirit. So we'll cover that. Then we will talk about the functions of the human spirit. Okay, so those are three, the main sections we want to cover before we finish this course. Now, in this chapter, chapter five, where we're talking about the human spirit and its interactions with the spiritual realm, uh, I want to focus in mainly on the born again human spirit. Uh, uh, we're not too much interested in what happens on the other side. Uh, now, you know, we know that we are spiritual beings and God has created us with the capacity to interact with the spiritual realm, that is the unseen realm. And in the spiritual realm, there is God and the angels, kingdom of light. But there's also darkness. There are, there are Satan and his demon spirits, demonic powers. Now, if people have the capacity to engage with the spiritual realm, either with God or with the dark side. So there are people, uh, human beings, who have developed their ability to interact with the dark side, with demonic spirits um, through, you know, various practices. Uh, and we're not interested in that. We are aware that that is possible. Uh, we are aware that people do that and they, they derive, you know, various things through that. Uh, but that's not what we're going to explore. What we want to understand is how, do, how does our 
born again human spirit interact with the spiritual realm now maybe we'll talk a little bit about the dark side just you know just to be aware of it but that's not what we want to explore what we want to explore is what do we see in the bible about how the born again spirit that means a believer right how does he engage with god the spiritual realm right with god who is spirit so at the very beginning we said you know god is spirit and when we engage with god when we interact with god or fellowship with god it is primarily spirit to spirit spiritually right so we are not fellowshipping with god physically you can't shake hands with god uh, you know you can't sit physically next to him and talk to him you, you can't do that but we relate to god spirit to spirit uh, and so our interactions with god are really in the spiritual realm spirit to spirit and so uh, i want us to understand that so that when we understand that dynamic uh, we can of course stand to benefit we can stand to interact with god or engage with god or fellowship with god in a much much better way right so it becomes a little bit more meaningful uh, as we engage with god so that's what we want to do in this chapter the human spirit and its interactions with the spiritual realm our focus is on the born again human spirit as a believer we will just mention a few things about what happens with the dark side which is you know people who connect with demonic powers we are aware of that now i want to summarize uh, four main things um and let me type it out here um these four important things now we are talking it from from the perspective of believer of a believer I'll, I'll i'll give you the notes for these things i'm just kind of work developing the content so it's not it was it's not in a form that i want to release to you yet but um, i'll just go ahead and speak first and then type it out and give it to you in, in a little bit more complete form but when we these are four things that we must understand and how god who is spirit engages with us in our born again human spirit right so we are focusing on that the born again human spirit so uh, wherever in, the, in these four sentences when i put spirit with small s uh, I, i'm referring to the born again spirit the spirit of a believer the spirit of the capitalist of course refers to the holy spirit god who is spirit so these four things and these are actually very simple um but we need to understand it and then we will get into a little deeper that is we get into the faculties of the born the spirit because it is through these faculties that the holy spirit interacts or communicates uh with our human spirit right so for example and we'll probably repeat this uh, when we get into the next section we talk about the faculties um for example our human body right we all understand our human body has five main senses right what we see uh, smell he hear feel taste and uh, through these five senses we actually connect with the whole world a uh, whole entire natural realm so we have five channels of input that's all but through these five channels of input we are connecting to the entire i mean everything in the natural realm we experience through these five channels of input and of course it's a very complex interaction of these five channels you know so when you you're seeing you're feeling you're hearing uh, you can you know smell and sometimes taste and all that comes into an, uh, an experience or comes into our learning or understanding similarly 
the human spirit has five faculties at least and it is through these five faculties that God who is spirit communicates to the human spirit the person the inner person God who is spirit communicates through these so we need to understand how these faculties operate and how these spiritual faculties engage with the spiritual realm so that God can communicate which we will do in the next section but right now I want us to understand these four important things that how the spiritual realm God or spirit interacts with our human spirit so number one the spirit which has got the Holy Spirit who has got the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit now we we understand this um, or, or let's go first to first Corinthians chapter 2 uh, I'll put this in the notes uh, first Corinthians chapter 2 now what's to look at verses uh, 11 and 12 please first Corinthians chapter 2 uh, verses 11 and 11 and 12 could somebody read that for us please First Corinthians chapter two, verses eleven and twelve. Shall I read first? Please go ahead. First Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven and twelve says, "For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God." that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Amen. So verse 11 is telling us that the human spirit, the human spirit is talking about the human spirit knows everything about the man, about that individual. Right? Verse 11. What man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him. That means your human spirit knows everything about you. So all of who you are is there in your human spirit. And then Paul says, Everything about God, the Holy Spirit knows. That's the second half of verse 11. And then he says, verse 12, that we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That means we have received the Holy Spirit. For what purpose? Verse 12. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So the Holy Spirit, who knows everything about God, He's been given to us. He comes and dwells with our spirit. So that He can teach our spirit. He can impart knowledge. He can speak to us, to our spirit. And from your human spirit, is going to come the understanding concerning everything about you. Because the Holy Spirit, who is God, who knows everything about God, He's also the one who goes, is going to impart to your human spirit the things that God wants you to know about yourself as well. So, the knowledge about God's call on your life, the knowledge about God's purpose for your life, the knowledge about what God wants you to do in your life is going to come from the Holy Spirit to your human spirit, and then come into your understanding. So if you want to think about it like this, your human spirit is what knows everything about you, about and it's in your human spirit that God is going to reveal things concerning you. And then from there, it's going to come into our understanding and then, you know, we live it out. 
But the Holy Spirit has been given to engage with our spirit. God engages with us first and foremost, spirit to spirit. And one of the things he does at the very beginning is he bears witness with our spirit. So we read about that in Romans, and I know we are all familiar with these verses. We go to Romans chapter 8, and uh, uh, we'll look at verses 16 and 17. Uh, Romans 8, okay, let's read verse 14 to 16. Romans 8, chapter 8, 14 to 16, please. Romans 8, 14 to 16. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then... That's good. That's, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll pick up in verse 15 it says, you know, you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, Holy Spirit. So here the Holy Spirit is referred to as a spirit of sonship. He's the one who makes us sons and daughters of God. He's a spirit of adoption. He makes us sons and daughters of God. So the Holy Spirit, now I'm connecting this back to 1 Corinthians. Uh, chapter 2, verse 12, that we have received the Spirit who is from God. He's a spirit of sonship, a spirit of adoption. But what does he do in our hearts? It tells us here that it is by him that we cry out, Abba, Father. It tells us here that he bears witness with our spirit. Now, this bearing witness, really, uh, it is the word to testify. It's like you're testifying, you're giving evidence to, you're saying something that you know as a fact. And so the Holy Spirit is bearing witness. He's testifying with our spirit or to our spirit. He is bearing, giving evidence that we are children of God. So the first thing that happens when the Spirit of God comes upon us, our spirit is, he brings about that conviction. So conviction inside you is birthed from the Holy Spirit. And the very, at the very basic level, the conviction to know that you are a child of God that you're a son, a daughter of God. And this happens at the time of being born again. So when you're born again, you know you're a child of God. But how do you know that? What makes you feel so convinced about it? I mean, we have no external you know, evidence. We didn't see a handwriting on the clouds or something like that. And yet we say so confidently, I am a child of God. How do you know that? Because the Spirit gives that conviction. But then what I want to extend that understanding is, conviction for a lot of other things comes in a similar manner. But the Holy Spirit gives you conviction. He bears witness with your spirit. If somebody asks me, how do you know you're supposed to be a pastor? Like you're supposed to be pastoring the church. How do you know? Did God appear to you and tell you that you're supposed to pastor? Um, did an angel come and tell you? How do you know? How do you know you're doing what God wants you to do? How do you know God wants you to be in the city of Bangalore? And, you know, be doing these things, you know, like pastoring a church or uh, serving people through a Bible college or 
whatever. How do you know? Did God appear to you? Did an angel come to you? Now, some people, very few, may have those kinds of experiences where, you know, an angel came or the Lord Jesus personally came to them. But most of us don't. But how do you know you're supposed to do that? How, how can you say, I, I know that is exactly? Well, the answer is very simple. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. The Holy Spirit testifies too. He produces that conviction in our spirit. And it is this conviction that forms the basis for what we call as being led by the Spirit. Because it says in verse 14, Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit. So, I may make, I may, or we may make a statement. I'm just using my personal example. I may make a statement and say, the Lord led me to the city of Bangalore um, to start a church, to pioneer a church, to take pastor a church, to serve people through the local church. And the Lord led us to start a Bible college. And the Lord led us, et cetera, et cetera, do this and do this. Question, did God appear to you and tell you to do it? Didn't an angel come to you and tell you to do it? On what basis do you say the Lord led you? Answer simple. Conviction. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit. The Spirit testifies. He gives evidence to our spirit. And when you act on that witness, when you act on that conviction, you are led by the Spirit. Do we all understand this? So this is the first one. Romans, based on Romans chapter 8, 14, 15, 16. I'm connecting that back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. So if you want to know everything about yourself, I mean, if you want to know about yourself, what is your calling? What is your purpose in life? Well, it's your spirit that knows everything about you. But where does your spirit get that knowledge about you? It comes from the Holy Spirit. So somebody asks me, what is God's purpose for your life? And I say, you know, God wanted me to, you know, do what I'm doing now, you know, be here and serve him here and et cetera, et cetera. So how do you know that was God's purpose for your life? Where did you get it from? Well, it came out of my spirit. But how did it get into your spirit? The Holy Spirit put that conviction. And then as you live out of that, you're actually being led by the Spirit. So that's the first thing. The interaction of the Spirit of God with our human spirit, giving us conviction and leading us, leading us into the purpose of God for our lives. That's the first thing. Any questions on that first part? Pastor, can I ask a question? Uh, so how can we be sure that it is really the Holy Spirit who is giving the conviction or uh, am I getting influenced by people's opinions or you know, even my own thoughts about the matter? So mm. how can we really uh, confirm it basically that it is from God? Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the things, and I'm not saying the only thing, but one of the things I really like to point to uh, in response to that question, which is a question all of us have, you know, um, because we all, as we pay attention to what is happening within us, in our human spirit, because the spirit is bearing witness with our spirit, and we feel convinced about certain things, I have to do this. 
of course the next question is how do I discern how do I know for sure that this witness that I feel this conviction that I feel is the Holy Spirit one of the things that I like to point to is um, um, uh, Ephesians 3 or we, we should read this whole passage here um, uh, Ephesians 3 1 to 7 uh, I'll just summarize it but Ephesians chapter 3 1 to 7 what Paul is talking about in Ephesians 3 1 to 7 is about the grace of God that was given to him and he says you know this was revealed to him he says you know the revelation that he made known to me the mystery so Paul understood about the grace of God that was given to him and there was of course the mystery of God also revealed to him and he recognized that there was the grace of God given to him to verse 7 to be a minister of that mystery right so he recognized it but in that recognition came also verse 7 the gift of the grace of God secondly the effective working of his power so he says there was verse 2 there was the grace of God that was given to him to be a minister so that's a recognition of what God called him to do wanted him to do but with that recognition of being a minister there were two other things there was the gift of the grace of God and there was the working of his power the effective working of his power so one of the things that I would look for is has God given me the gift of grace in that area so is there a the work the gift of grace is God's grace being put upon my life for that and second is is there the effective working of his power in that direction so these are two important things that there is the grace of god over my over somebody's life aligned to what they are called to do so there's calling there's gifting there's grace and there's power so all four have to line up the call of God the gift of God the grace of God and the power of God line up that's where we would be very effective so I would look for that at least signs for it you know it's not going to be obviously in, in its mature state we grow in these things of course but at least I, I need to see indicators or signs of the gift grace and power of God at work aligned to that conviction that calling sure sure thank you thank you best yeah okay uh i, I see Beth's question where do involuntary physical reactions come from our spirit you know i believe the word and in, in my mind i'm fairly peaceful my body reacts such as fast heart rate or stomach so where does that come from Okay. Um, so, um, so, but uh, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor or I'm not a specialist in this area. So I'm just sharing my thoughts, all right? So don't take what I say as as final or anything. I'm just sharing my thoughts in response to your question on. Uh, where do involuntary physical reactions come from sometimes i'm not saying always but sometimes 
uh, what affects our spirit eventually comes through our mind and affects our body right so if i am very anxious i'm very disturbed and distressed and my spirit doesn't seem to be at peace then that sense of uh, restlessness feeling disturbed anxiety so on can obviously affect my mind and my body or sometimes and i think the second case which is i think is more common than the first one the second case is i may be in my spirit very comfortable resting in the promise of god resting in god but i haven't quietened my mind down my soul my soul has not yet come to the place of being like a weaned child and the psalmist writes about it my soul is still in that place of being disturbed spirit yes you know i have learned to okay that's the promise of god i'll rest in it but my soul, my soul, and my mind, my will, my emotions are still in that place of being agitated, and then that does affect my body. Right now, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just saying based on what we understand from scripture. And the second case is probably the most common for all of us believers, because you know, all of us believers, we know the promise of God. Uh, we know what God has spoken and we can affirm that. But then our mind is still anxious or disturbed or restless just because, you know, it's so connected to the natural world. Uh, things we see here are, or, you know, our mind is at work. And so we must learn to quiet and our mind down. Uh, and then it can, you know, or if our mind is very agitated, it then affects our body or... Uh, so that's the connect. So that would be my response to you. Your question is the second case, which is very often. Okay. All right. So going back to how the spirit interacts with our spirit, the Holy Spirit interacts with our spirit. Number one is this conviction, bearing witness. Second, let me just move on and cover these four. The second is this, the Holy Spirit gives revelation this is an impartation of knowledge to our human spirit now knowledge in our human spirit can come through two ways one is through the normal process of the senses to our mind and then into our spirit so for example right now as you're listening to me and as we are all reading the scripture and we're all thinking about the same thing and we're all discussing, we are learning from each other. It's the normal process. That means, you know, we're interacting, we're reading the scripture, we are discussing, we are learning, we're asking questions. And through that knowledge goes through our mind, we understand what we are discussing and what we are reading. And then it gets into our spirit, which is good. But the Holy Spirit can also directly impart revelation to your human spirit because he knows all things. He knows everything about God. And he teaches. He teaches us. You know, John 16, verse 30. Jesus said that when he, the Spirit, well, let's turn there, uh, I hope... I wish we had a lot of time. We could just go on this very slowly, but uh, we'll have to go a little fast here. But John 60. John 60. Right. And verse 13. Could somebody read that, please? John 16, verse 13, please. Shall I read this? Please go ahead. However, when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come amen right. so the holy spirit is going jesus said right the holy spirit will guide us into all truth he teaches us uh, john 14 26 he will teach you all things right 
same thing John you know in in first John 2 27 he repeats this first John chapter 2 uh, verse 20 and also verse 27 he says you know the anointing that you have of him referring to the Holy Spirit he teaches you all things and verse 27 first John 2 27 he says and you don't need any man to teach you because the Holy Spirit teaches you all things now that is not disregarding you know the people whom God has put in the body to teach but the emphasis is the Holy Spirit is teaching you. He's imparting knowledge to your human spirit. Or he's giving revelation, spiritual knowledge to your human spirit. So that's the second thing. And we must pay attention to that. That there is knowledge being spiritual knowledge spiritual truth the holy spirit is teaching your human spirit giving understanding giving revelation giving wisdom to your spirit and then you pick it up so sometimes you know uh, if you are paying attention you will realize that there are moments when you can use the word tube light or some a light coming on a light bulb coming on so like, oh, oh, i understand it oh i didn't see it before you know we use those phrases or we use those terms but it's the holy spirit giving you revelation in your spirit and you say oh god i understand now what is happening the holy spirit is teaching you he is guiding you to all truth he is uh, imparting truth or revelation to your human spirit, and your human spirit is understanding it. So that's the second function. That's the second thing of how God interacts with our human spirit, the born again human spirit. He teaches, He gives truth, He gives revelation, He gives understanding. But the same question we would ask is, how do I validate that what I'm, what I, you know, I, I, I feel I've received in my spirit is, is from the Holy Spirit? Well, that's validated against the scriptures, right? The Spirit and the Word agree. So this is First John chapter five or seven. The Spirit and the Word agree. That means what? The Holy Spirit speaks, the living word, and the written word, all, all agree. So the Holy Spirit is not going to contradict the written word. He reveals, he unveils truth in the word. So revelation is given to our human spirit. So that's part of our learning. There is the learning that we have through the natural process that is through our mind, which is good, and we must continue with that. But we must also be open to the revelation because sometimes our answers may not come from the natural learning process. That is, you know, you, you're, you're searching, you may find all the books and you may listen to everybody and trying to find out, get answers. It may not come that way. It may come from the Holy Spirit guiding you to all truth. He gives you that understanding. That's where the answers come from. The third way the Spirit of God interacts with our human spirit is this. He produces the fruit of the Spirit. And this is in Galatians 5. Now uh, we are all familiar with it. We talk about, over, over in Galatians 5, the Apostle Paul says, we must walk in the Spirit. We must be led by the Spirit. We must live by the Spirit. That means my whole our life here is, is, is originating from the Spirit of God. Our human spirit is connected with the Holy Spirit and life originates from that. We live by the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit, we are led by the Spirit. And in that context, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit. And he mentions love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, goodness, temperance, faith, 
uh, against the such there is no law the fruit of the spirit so what is the fruit of the spirit it's what the holy spirit developing the character and the virtue of christ in our human spirit which is then expressed through our manner of life the way we live but where does it develop in your human spirit how is it developed the holy spirit develops that the holy spirit releases produces that in our spirit what love giving us the capacity to love joy giving us the capacity to walk in joy peace kindness meekness self control faith and yeah, you know all of that the holy spirit produces it comes from him but it's produced in our spirit developed in our spirit becomes a part of us and then we walk in it so the spirit produces the fruit of the spirit and the last one and this is based on 1 Corinthians 12 the spirit manifests through the human spirit so when the holy spirit wants to work through us he manifests himself that means he is expressing himself he is making himself visible you know that's such, such an amazing thought that god is making himself visible through us human beings born again people so god so that's what the manifestation of the spirit is the spirit of god is revealing something of himself through us how does it happen how does it happen the holy spirit works through our human spirit desiring to express something of himself whether it's the power of god or whether it's word of knowledge or word of wisdom or you know working miracles and then it comes through us so then we process it and we express it and when we express it is actually the manifestation of the spirit the holy spirit is expressing himself through us but it begins holy spirit human spirit our soul and body release it so we have to learn how to pick that up first of all in our human spirit second how to bring our soul and body aligned to that so that the holy spirit can express so many times the reason we don't see manifestations is not because the holy spirit is unwilling to manifest himself many times we don't see manifestations is because the rest of the flow is interrupted either we have not learned to pick up in our spirit or we have not learned how the soul and the body should come aligned to that so that it can be released through us and so right there it stops so the problem is not with the holy spirit not desiring to manifest himself i think the holy spirit is more than eager to manifest himself but in our spirit we have not learned the interaction and we have not learned how to bring our soul and body in subjection so that we can release him more freely and more effectively and many times our mind and our body just block the flow so fourth four things about the interaction of the born again spirit with the spirit of god number 1 the spirit that is the holy spirit bears witness with our spirit number 2 the spirit gives revelation or teaches our human spirit number 3 the spirit produces in our human spirit the fruit of the spirit that is the character and the virtues of christ and number 4 the spirit manifests himself through our spirit the means he operates he works through our spirit to touch people so 
So our invitation is, how do we develop the human spirit so that these four interactions are smooth, they are growing in what's happening? That's what we're going to pursue. Any questions now? I know we have a few more minutes. Any questions on these four things? Um, are you all with me? Do you, you're understanding what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Pastor, I have a question. Uh, uh, some people, you know, uh, someone I know, uh, just prays and then opens the Bible randomly and uh, reads the word and says that I found this word for me in the word of God. So that, um, that did not, you know, convince me. So when we say that Lord gives us a word to confirm, so... Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor, how do we how do we get that word? Like, what is the way we should go? And uh, is this the thing uh, right or wrong? That's what I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, if somebody has the Bible and they just randomly open and then read a verse. Um, so right now, my finger is on Psalm one thirty two verse four. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. <laughs> you know. Now, that is not the way to do things. Right? Uh, now, God may, at times, at occasion, do that. But that's not the way we are supposed to be led by God. Right? It's not casting lots. It's not, you know, it's not that. But how would God use the scriptures in leading? Well, he would, you know, the first one, he would bear witness with your spirit. And in that bearing witness, he would give you a scripture. So that's coming by inspiration, not by accident. So this thing, you do this, is by accident. You know, now my finger is on another verse in Jeremiah 23, 15. It doesn't make sense. But, you know, that's by accident. And God doesn't lead us by accident. He leads us by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Right? So we have to be sensitive to that. You know, for example, yesterday, Sunday service, finished ministering, I, I usually come down and I wait, you know, I just minister to people one on one. And, uh, you know, one man came to me and uh, he, for prayer. And at that moment, the Lord just, in my spirit, it's all very happening very quietly. It's not like some thunder and lightning. In my spirit, he just, you know, I would say, I would use the word, reminded me of a scripture. At that time, I couldn't recall the reference. I came and looked it up later on. But I, I remember the verse. This is Psalm 113, verse 7 and 8. So I, I couldn't remember the reference at that, at that moment. But this, the word was very clear. God raises the poor out of the ash heap. And puts them among princes. So I just, you know, I just spoke that to him. Now I didn't tell him the Lord spoke to me. The Lord said to me, and I said, you know, hey, the Bible says, you know, God. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that God will take the poor out of the ash heap and set him among princes. So I want you to just believe God. You know, that God will take you out of where you are right now and put you to do this, right? So now that's how I spoke. It seemed like a very normal conversation, but actually the reason I was speaking that particular verse to him was because at that very moment the Holy Spirit reminded me speak this to him right so that's inspiration the spirit bearing witness with us but then he 
at the next person I was praying. And I just began to speak things over his life. And I was not speaking, you know, randomly. It seemed like a normal conversation. But for me, I know I'm speaking under the anointing. Now, I don't tell him, you know, oh, I, you know, I feel the anointing and I'm speaking under the and I'm prophesying over your life. No, I don't just do it. I'm just having a normal conversation. But the words I'm speaking to him at that moment is actually I can I, I personally know the sense the anointing. I personally recognize that the very words I'm speaking are inspired at that moment. But my conversation with him is very normal. And I'm just speaking over his life. Then I pray with him. So that's how we should be operating when we are ministering to people, not randomly opening the Bible, putting our finger and saying, this is God's word. That's accident. We are led by the inner witness. You know, We are led by the Holy Spirit bearing witness with our spirit. One follow-up question first, if we have time. Mm -hmm. is that sometimes, uh, it, is it possible that a word is coming to you, a simple word like humble, and then you start reading the word which uh, in the Bible which speaks of humility, humbleness, mm -hmm. something, and then uh, you get the word from the Lord, uh, what is Lord talking to you about? Look, I mean, is that the mm -hmm. way God can yeah. talk to you? That's, that's, also, that's also fine. That's okay. also fine. So God is giving you that lead or the leading of a particular word or a theme. Then you go back into the scripture, you connect it to the scripture, which is perfectly fine. And it is the right thing to do. And then you speak out of that. And that's that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. But the inspiration at that moment is coming from God. He's still giving you what to look at. You know, in this case, example would be humility. You know, so that's good. Abraham, uh, can we say the scriptures is the outward confirmation of the work of the Holy Spirit in us? Yes. All right. So uh, the spirit bears witness with our spirit, but the spirit and the word agree. So we always have to come back and check with the scriptures. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I know we're a little over time, but uh, okay. So. Um, uh, I will write this up for us. We will complete this chapter. And then we will move into the next chapter uh, next week, which is the faculties of the Spirit. So in order for us to pick up these four interactions, our faculties must be fine-tuned. So we're going to talk about that. Okay. Uh, Prabhakar, the example of training our soul and body. Okay, okay. So we will touch on that as we talk about training our spiritual faculties you know how uh, we will talk on that okay all right let's go for a break and uh, we will connect to the next class in about five to ten minutes I will open up the class and uh, right after this and then you know take your break and join okay thank you everyone I'll see you in the next class God bless bye now